to start, I'm going to throw out a summary of what I perceive your um, your research interests to be, and you can can correct me and add to this uh, if I'm wrong. But um, from what I know about you, your interest is to figure out what will make science better, mm -hmm. what will make it more inclusive, what will make it more fun, and what will make it more productive. Uh, is that an accurate summary, or would you would you change that? I think that's a pretty accurate summary. Um, more inclusive, more productive. What was the third thing you said? And more fun. And more fun. Yeah, I think I've been really focused on the fun part um, lately. Because I think if you make it fun, then you get the other things uh, as side effects. So um, I, I would definitely agree with that. What What is right now, what's your your current um, obsession? What are you most interested in? So in it from a research perspective. From a research perspective, on Saturday and Sunday, I spent the entire day studying machine learning because a big part of jelly will be this like machine learning model and this machine learning pipeline where when people fix these papers the tool gets better and better as more people use it i don't know anything about machine learning Denny doesn't know anything about machine learning and we decided not to hire anyone so i guess we're the ones that are going to figure it out um, so i've been reading a book i've been uh do i've been like non-diligently doing a course for months called fast ai and uh -huh. doing this other course on Udemy at the same time. So I'm not really sure where I'm going. I'm just kind of like, I kind of call it like backpacking, okay. backpacking through the existing yeah. stuff. Um, cool. There's that. And then I've been reading Bible every day, which I'm like kind of scared to tell the internet about. <laughs> and then I've been reading um, Daily Reflections, which is an Alcoholics Anonymous book every uh -huh. day, which I'm also kind of scared to tell people about. And then beyond that, I've been really diving into the, um, history of like Markdown and how that was created, how that became like the thing that we use on GitHub and other places on the internet and kind of like the history of where science came from, where science came online, things like that. Got it. Okay, cool. It's it's interesting because those are really um, divergent um, research interests. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and then beyond that, there's like a rhetoric interest, which is like, how do you deliver what you're trying to deliver in the most memorable way, which is a journey that I've been on for many years now. Right, of course. Yeah. Um, so, well, the products you've built, I think, really reflect that. Um, I want to just like, uh, I'd love to, maybe when we go through the research process, maybe we could talk about the machine learning or whatever you have um, set up. Um, what, uh, what are your, to get to your big ideas, what are your big ideas for improving science? You've been working in this field for, 10 years or longer, um, and what, what do you think the most important things to do are? Um, what are the most important things to do in science? I think, I always think of it as like, a, if I'm building for you, one other person, or if yeah. I'm building mm -hmm. for myself, what would I want? Yeah. And what would I selfishly want? Like, I selfishly want to have fun doing science, do good science, uh, maybe just those two things. And what prevented me from having fun and doing good science when I was do when I was in the lab at University of Washington. So I think the like really basic thing that maybe it's basic is just like make useful stuff for scientists to do more science. Um, yeah. And for me right now, that is when you're trying to read papers or you're trying to understand the existing knowledge in the world, you always hit these paywalls 
once you go past the paywalls, you have like a hundred PDFs and you can't yeah. like, that's not the way that my brain organizes the information. So why should the computer organize the information that way? Right. So you're looking at this and it's interesting because you've spent so much time on experiment kind of aiming at a systemic problem, uh, which is, you know, the amount of funding that, you know, going to a small amount of researchers and not enough funding. But this, now you're focused on not even uh, like the changing the system of science, you're narrowing your focus down to changing the actual individual process and habits of scientists. Is that fair? Yeah, I think, I think if we tried to change the natural behaviors of scientists, we will, we will fail. Uh, it's like understanding what the natural behaviors of scientists already are, and then matching yeah. the tool to what they naturally do. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, uh, I want to jump back and ask you a few questions about the uh, specifically the Bible and the Alcoholics yeah. Anonymous stuff. Is it uh, is this for religious purposes or is this for like you're trying to study how people um, how groups form? What what what's the what's the research end of that? Yeah, um, that work. So I grew up in a Catholic family. Uh, I got confirmed when I was like 18 and when I, my parents or whoever asked me like Cindy do you want to get confirmed I was like well I don't have anything better to do with my time so sure why not um, yeah. and through that process I was like I don't believe these things that these people are telling me um, but right. what's really interesting about the Catholic Church and about Christianity is how many people this like religion touches so when right. I was living in New York City a few years back, I would go to the St. Patrick's Cathedral. For a while, I was going every single day um, yeah. to go to Mass. Because if you're Catholic, you're like supposed to go to Mass every day. And I think like in a way, I approach Catholicism in a way that's a little bit disrespectful. So I like am kind of scared to talk about it publicly. Um, yeah. And then I got re-interested in the Bible. I've been wanting to read the Bible for a long time, but it's hard for me to like open the Bible up and read it. And so two or three weeks ago, I was like, hmm, I've been using Jelly to like read research papers with these journal clubs. And I was like, it's the same thing as Bible study. My parents would go to this thing called faith sharing mm. every Friday. And I would like play Nintendo 64 with my brother with other kids, but they would like really intently study. Yeah the Bible. Interesting. So I called my mom and I was like, what are you going to, there's no more Bible study because COVID-19. What's happening? And oh. How do you do that? And she was like, well, I just lined the priest. And I was like, what? You like, when you have a question about uh. the Bible, you just send a line message. That's weird. And then, and then I was like, okay, maybe I can start to read. Wait, so she actually like, hi she highlights it or she underlines it and then takes a photo and sends it no, to the No, so line, oh, like how does she deliver it over a line? Line is like the mes messaging platform, like the WhatsApp. Okay, oh, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, awesome, okay. Um, and then I was just like, oh, I <laughs> think she mentioned, if you go to church every day for three years, you will have covered the entire Bible. And I was like, what? That's not huh. true. The Bible is super long. And I think you, you like go through the whole thing and get like specific chunks. And I, I was, and she was like, everyone around the world reads the same passage every day determined by the Pope or whatever. And then I was yeah. like, oh, that's weird. And then so I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just read whatever they tell me to read. And I started doing that maybe like 21 days ago. And so I've been huh. doing the reading supply, which is one of the tools that I really like. Um, made by my friend Jim. And then mm -hmm. I tacked on to that the Alcoholics Anonymous daily report right. because that book is also a daily book. And so it's almost huh. like uh, somebody is telling me what to do so I don't have to decide what to read. Or something, someone's telling me what I need to read today. And then I annotate. Interesting. 
So you're looking at um, not, not trying to figure, not looking from science outwards. You're looking from, uh, you're looking at patterns in society of, I guess it would be kind of um, collective reading and interpreting habits and trying to, um, well, I guess just at this point, trying to learn from them and see what they have to teach. Um, what's, been, what's been surprising to you in those 21 days? The one thing I really like to do is in the Bible, these like apostles or disciples or whatever, they yeah. are always like walking from this city to this city or this region to this region. And I've been going uh -huh. on Google Maps and I'll just like put in where they started and where they ended. And like, they're walking like eight hours at a time or something like 19 hours. I'm like, are these people like, and then in the middle, they'll be like, when I walked from this place, I actually made a map here. Find it. Oh my gosh. Like I like made this map. This is of like Turkey. And so this is like <laughs> old names, but they'll be like, I went from, I don't know how to pronounce any of these things, like Lydia to like Cyprus or some, Cyprus is an island. And then like halfway in the middle, this like light appeared from the sky and then God wow. told me this thing. I'm like, yeah, if I walked 20 hours, I would also like imagine a light in the sky and like think that somebody was talking to me. All right, all right. So that's <laughs> Interesting, interesting. I, you know, I read, I did read the Bible a couple of years ago, and um, not the whole thing, but I spent like a several months. Of, this was my like bedtime reading. Um, it's similar kind of thinking to yours of like this is an, really an amazing thing that so many people read this, and I hadn't done that. Um, and it's it, it's really a an astounding like book it's full of really incredible stories especially the old testament stuff is wild um so it's it's i i, I know that feeling because i you know it's a, an interesting thing to um to to talk about that process with with the internet but uh, especially if you you know it's not a kind of a religious affiliation which um is i think rare so cool cool for you for doing that i i'm i'm interested and uh excited to hear what else you learn um in those in those arenas i think that'll be that'll be fun to hear um cool so getting back jumping back forward to your ideas for improving um science it sounds to me like you're focusing on some really hard problems like the the reorganizing um the way the way people think or put, putting the way people think into um new designs and new tools is is a complicated design challenge so what are you what are you learning there what's um where are you having breakthroughs and where are you having where are you hitting roadblocks yeah when i first started experiment i think i was of this opinion of like let's make everything open and like open all the things. And if everyone just opened all the things, all the protocols, data, like results, everything would be great. And I yeah. think like four to five years into experiment, I was like, no, that's the wrong way to think about it. <laughs> Change my mind. Huh. Um, and I think the way to make science open is you make it closed first. So you make something that like with Jelly, something that's really important to me is that the person doing the science in Jelly or on the tool feels really safe, as if they could tell Jelly all of their secrets, all of this, all of the stuff they're like, sometimes not even willing to admit to themselves, they're willing to put in this space um, and like trust this space. Because I believe, I've had this experience where like, I'll start doing some sort of research. We'll just say like the Bible stuff. If I were to put it somewhere that's like really safe and safe and trustworthy, probably when I'm, I'm 31 now, if I, when I'm like 40, I'll be like, oh, that stuff that I did when I was 31, who cares? Let's put it out in the open. Um, but yeah. to get that stuff documented when it's so raw and like, I don't know, un... It's like, I'm not even sure what I am doing. I don't want other people to see what I'm doing. Um, if yeah. I don't get that documented at that time, 
any time after that I try to document that experience will be inaccurate. Um, so like, let's make a space where you can do that privately by yourself and with a few friends that you really trust so that one day when you feel ready, or maybe one day when I die, I'll put in my will, like open up all my stuff, all my secrets. Yeah. Wow. So um, that's a, that's a high goal for a product to be the intimate home for your ideas. Um, and, um, but you, you said something I think is interesting. So um, because, you know, in the research I'm doing around um, science, uh, like meta science, meta, meta research is like, is there's a few common responses, right? There's, well, science is closed, it should be open. Or there's no, there's a replication crisis, so we need to incentivize people to replicate studies. Or there's a funding crisis, so maybe we should move to a lottery. Or science communication is broken, we need, uh, we need to educate the public in science more. And actually, it seems to me like all of those simple suggestions and those simple answers are, are wrong. Um, to give you an example, like in science communication, mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's great research from um, Dan Kahn at Yale. Kahan, I, I think is how you pronounce it. And um, if you just Google the science of science communication, you can find his papers. But it actually turns out that just educating people more is almost has a negative impact on some of these really controversial ideas and we're seeing this has to everything to do with human psychology and like politically biased reasoning right like we're seeing this now with covid right like all the science that's coming out it's being like pulled into the different political ideologies and weaponized against uh opposing groups and um just adding more science education actually reinforces um that that divide that politically biased reasoning so it's actually not quite that simple and it's interesting for me to hear you say um, that you think science should start closed because, um, or partially be closed because um, you've been, uh, you know, I, I would think that you would just say, oh, let's open everything up. That's, um, I've heard that, I think I've actually heard that argument from you before, maybe years ago, but um, so, Tell me more about that. Where is the line? Like, when does that close become open? Whenever I'm sorry, that, that was long-winded. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever that individual feels ready. And that's not for mm -hmm. the product to decide. That's not for anyone to decide, but the creator. Um, and so I think that's my current stance. One of the things that this reminded me of is, so in between Experiment and Jelly, I spent some time with my friends in San Francisco um, at the house that you're at for the science dinner, uh, yeah. like doing office hours with early stage founders. Mm -hmm. So they, my, my friend invested in like, I don't know, 10 early stage companies. And then they were like, Cindy, come live in the house. And like in exchange for free housing, like we would like to ask you to like meet with a few founders once a week. And one of the things that I noticed is that it's not super important. I mean, my opinion is it's not super important to give people good advice, but it is really important to shield them from bad advice. Mm. So if you can make this like space, this bubble, that's like, that lets them be their best self or like lets them, lets their creativity run wild, then they'll be very, they'll, they're, they have a higher chance of success. It's when like some person from like big company comes in and is like, at big company, we do X, Y, and Z and you need all these processes. And then the, like, well, me as like the naive founder when I was 19, I'm like, oh, the like mm -hmm. experienced person knows what to do and must do what they're doing. That's like what kills creativity. And I think that's also true in science in that we're like, we need to make this space. It's like a really precious space for scientists to be able to play. Um, and that means if anyone comes in and tries to like step all over their toys, that person's not allowed in this space yeah. anymore. Interesting. Okay. So it's like, um, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Um, it's almost like, uh,
like I'm, I'm for some reason I'm thinking about like baseball mm-hmm. where um, like you play little league and then you play a different, then you play the next level up and then you play high school, then you play in the minor leagues. And like at every level you're playing with um, at a, like a level of competition that you can um, actually compete with, right? Like if you just threw like a high schooler in the major leagues, they're going to be terrible, right? They're going to get, they're going to get demolished. And I think, I, I, I don't think the analogy works perfectly. Um, but this idea that there are like concentric circles of um, both trust and rigor um, that need to be weighted through at different times, like at at different stages of the idea, especially for um, maybe younger or newer researchers, I would say newer, because I feel like I'm a late late blooming scientist myself um is that is that a good analogy or do you have do you have another analogy that you've been using i think to add to that i think off, like with the experiment we always talked about like the young scientists and giving the young scientists a chance or the new scientists but i lately i've been trying to like empathize with the famous scientists too And I'm not a famous scientist, but I suspect that, I guess one of the things I've been doing every week is I've been reading a Paul Graham essay with um, one of my friends who is a freshman at University of Waterloo. His name is Yash. And he's like, Cindy, I wanna start a startup one day. Um, We like annotate an essay together and then we discuss it. And like he asks questions. Oftentimes I also ask questions. I learn a lot. He says, I, I think he's learning or he's enjoying it. We keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and I think if you use the baseball analogy, it's like, oh, this super famous baseball player meets this like 10 year old that's just starting out for them to see each other as equals is a really powerful thing. And in science, Mm -hmm. I suspect that it is very refreshing when like someone who's like really, really famous, some Nobel prize winner meets somebody that just treats them like, you know, a scientist and not like this person that has this title with these like awards and stuff like that. If we can get that kind of connection to happen more, um, where there is no like mentee mentor relationship, everyone's like, we're trying to do the science that would, that's like my ideal world. Interesting. Um, I think that that sounds that sounds really noble. I know, like as a writer, I've had like some writers I really admire comment or um, uh, I know read my stuff and, and make comments about it, and it was like that was it totally changed. It was one of the most rewarding things that ever happened. So I, I can see where that um, I could see where that will be really valuable. Um, well, that's cool. So where are you at? What, so for Jelly, it's right. It's a private beta right now. When, what's the timeline for this? How many people are using it? When, when do those, the circles get wider for who can use it? Yeah. So my friend Yash, when we were reading one of the essays, he was like, there is some sentence about like startups should launch. And then his question was something yeah. like, Cindy, are we going to launch Jelly sometime? And then I was like, yeah. Oh, I like, we made this thing and we never told the world about it. Maybe I should do that. So one of my yeah. tasks for last week was to come up with a blog post draft. And then, so I did okay. that and that's like in the hopper for, so my process is I write the draft or Denny writes a draft then the other person edits then. So ed- Denny will review it and then I'll make one cut of edits and then it will go live. So hopefully yeah. that will go live unless Denny is like, Cindy, this is so bad. Can't release this. Um, and at that point, anyone that is running a journal club on some regular cadence where they read a scientific paper will be able to, uh, sign up for the private alpha. Our bottleneck right now is that our machine learning model isn't super accurate. So we have two friends who are working for us part-time, uh, Nicole and Bailey, 
that are like cleaning it up. Uh, so it's almost like our humans are, the humans are the software until I figure out all this machine learning, me and Danny figure out all this machine learning stuff, uh, which is not a trivial thing. <laughs> yeah, well, that sounds cool. So you, you mentioned a little bit about your process, like reviewing um, blog posts and essays. I'd love to actually make sure we have like 15 minutes. I wanna make sure that we, um, jump into actually seeing your research pro process because you you said you'd be open to doing this and I would love to see it. So um, are, you, are you up for it? Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay. All right. My screen is shared. All right. What would you, where should we start? Well, I guess where, where do you get information? Like how, do, how does a, a new idea come into your world? Hmm. So where do I get information? Um, depends on the topic. For example, one of the things that I'm working with right now is we've started using this new tool called Linear, which is, okay. I think it's like a competitor to Jira or these types of like project management tools or Asana. Um, one of the things I found really interesting is in the, they also have like a community kind of like how Jelly has a community. Yeah. So if you go into Linear customers, when I first came in here, I just went into, random and I read the entire thing of like how people do product how you go from design to engineering and all this stuff and then so I, I like took a lot of this stuff and I put it into my jelly I have this public slack channel called process and it's like dump stuff in here so that's one way that I get information I also get information from Twitter um, I almost follow I try to follow like only uh, I'm trying to follow more artists um, and yeah. trying to like get away from tech and get away from that, like the Silicon Valley world. Um, so I don't know what my feed looks like. I like check out this and like if I find stuff, then I'll put it in that process channel too. Um, so when you're following artists, are you looking for kind of visual inspiration or are you looking for uh, different ways of thinking? What's the, what's the motivation be behind following more artists? Mm, part of it is visual inspiration. Um, part of it is I want Twitter to be like this place where I'm reminded of what the web was like when I was 10, like a Neopets yeah. type thing. Like, so any, so this guy has been yeah. making some cool stuff. Um, like he makes animations. I'm not really sure what their business model is, but they like make, he posted something recently. Oh, maybe I can't find it. Or here's like one thing um, where he, he's just making these like cute things, um, which is like a really powerful thing if you could turn this into a news broadcast or like uh, he's, I think they're making a series for, um, this education company in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. This kind of stuff. And I've been watching the Midnight the Midnight Gospel, which is a new show on Netflix made by some of the guys that made Adventure Time. So Adventure Time has always been a big inspiration for me. And then Miyazaki's stuff. So Totoro has always been a really big inspiration for me. When people ask me, Cindy, like who do you look up to? There's only one person that I look up to and it's like Hayao yeah. Miyazaki. Um, yeah. And probably because I just, there isn't that much information about him and the, what he produces or what his team produces is so different. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I also store some stuff in Arena. Okay. This is like my visual uh, dashboard. Um, so let me see, I have my, my stuff, my profile. So I've been like collecting these spirits in this section. I don't know what this super top secret stuff. Is. Oh, this is really interesting. I started subscribing to animation resources, which is this community of animators that go into the archives and find these old videos that were broadcasted on TV 
and then like package them once every two months and deliver them to like the community to subscribe. So this is like one of the early Pinocchio sketches. And so I get some of my stuff from there. Um, what else? So what about for like to to get into like a specific topic that you're um, researching? Like so for the machine learning stuff you're doing, like how are you doing the research um, for that? I know the output isn't really like a paper; it's more like a a tool that you're building. So what? Um, how does that start? Where does that go? Um, how do you take notes? Machine learning has always been really hard because it's this field that has grown so quickly. So there's so many resources out there. I started right. with fast AI, um, which is this course that many, many people have recommended. Um, so I started watching videos. I always watch videos on 2X and oftentimes I'm watching them while I like cook dinner or I'm going on a walk or a run or in the car. Um, so I found that AirPods are actually really valuable to me because I like start a video and like walk to the bathroom or like walk outside and I can yeah. continue to listen. Uh, I am reading this book here, which is machine learning systems. Oh wait, can you see that? I yep. guess. Yeah. Um, so I have this weird process where I have a physical book, but then I also have machine learning systems in jelly. I think I do. So my dream, is that systems my dream is that we have something like goodreads but every the content of every book is just available instantly and i'm kind yeah. of doing that here with jelly but i have to um i have to like import all the stuff so it's a little bit tedious though i think the tedious work is valuable because then i end up really actually reading it um yeah so this is not a great process. I don't think the tools are that good. So I'm like hacking some stuff together. How does information or notes from what you're reading um, migrate into an essay? Do you just go back and find it later, or do you have a what? Do you have a process for that, um, or or what? Yeah. So there's like the notes from this book. Are yeah. in here so you'll see like this notebook I don't know it's like some cheap oh, notebook you... I got from uh, Amazon so oh, it's backwards can you make that one smaller or can you make your, your screen bigger I'd love to see that make my can you my screen or I'm showing you or I, yeah or make the or stop the screen share just so oh. I can see that because that, that would be really interesting okay okay so you just keep so, a notebook I don't even know if this is important I call this like chicken scratch yeah I love that that's what I love and so you just keep stacks the of these. Yeah. And then I have, um, like, let me turn you around. Like, I have a bunch right. of post-its. So every uh -huh. time I have an idea, it goes onto, a, like, there are post-its over there, too. Um, and okay. then if you look at my trash, it's full of post-its of stuff. You can't really see it, but I have a trash over there with lots of post-its. And okay. I have this problem where... Oftentimes I'm working on something and then like I get this idea and my solution to that is like, Cindy, if you write it down and put it on the wall, it will be safe. You won't forget it. Like it's safe. Yeah. You can move on. Totally. Um, and totally. that's a process that I use. And then for writing blog posts the other day, I, I wake up really early in the morning at like 530. I don't know why, but that's like a thing that happened recently. And so this is my blog post from that will end up, Okay, so that's a bigger notebook though. Is that still, that's not chicken scratch. That's so more of like no a project notebook. Scratch. Yeah, but okay. everything before is chicken scratch. Okay. It just okay. happened to end up in here. I sit on Got the porch it. and then I try to, I think the hard part is like, I want it to be perfect. So I like have to get into this mindset where it's like, Cindy, it's not going to be perfect. You just need to like get, get stuff down and try to Got write it. it in the same way that you speak. Then that Got goes. It to uh, one of two places. It usually goes into reading supply. So if I share my screen, I, oops. So I have reading supply while well, that's loading. I started using this thing called Typora um, yesterday as the first time and I really like 
it. And I'm probably going to take a lot of inspiration from Taipura for jelly. But like if you go into this view, you can use Markdown and be like, hello, like the title. Um, oh, wow. Writing. Um, yeah, this is, I use Write Room and then I do something similar. This is how I do a lot of my drafting. Cool. So I like that because it's clean. Let me get out of here. Yeah, I like that. Um, delete. And then Reading Supply is similar in that it's very clean. Um, most of my writing that happens in reading supply doesn't ever make it anywhere. Like you go into this library. I've been keeping this thing called the captain's log for now. We can check how many weeks, 73 weeks. Wow. So every it's week. It's just like a. Yeah. And, and it's just like a note to yourself or just kind of like a, here's what we did. Here's the. So this, you'll see the library folder is called Dear Admiral which okay. means I'm writing it to the Admiral. So who is the Admiral? Um, so I've been working with this, she's like a friend, her name is Mo, and I write her an email every Wednesday. Um, and I also store it in here. She doesn't know that I store it in here. She just knows that I write her this email. Sometimes she writes back, sometimes she doesn't. Um, <laughs> but you do send it to her. I always send week. it to her, yeah. And I've been doing this since, uh, December 2018. And I, I was, and you, a little bit you know this person, right? It's not just some random person on the internet. That yeah, you found. I know her. <laughs> I've known her for like three to four years. We recently did a podcast together for her podcast. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, that's some of the writing. And then you can see the Bible stuff is also in here. So I like to call things like, you probably shouldn't call the archive like body of Christ. I used to have this goblet that I used to drink out of during high school and we would call it the blood yeah. of Christ. Like that's not yeah. something that I should probably put on the internet, but it's like a thing. Okay. This yeah. is interesting. So you, you publish this, this is like on the internet somewhere yeah, or you're just keeping it as a draft. It's on the internet. I don't know if it's indexed by Google, um, but it is public. You do a great job of really documenting your work and your thinking in your thinking process. I really admire that. Mine doesn't, I, I have a hard time publishing anything before it's gotten like a solid two levels of editing, meaning like editing in the notes, editing in a draft, editing before I publish. I'm not, I need to get better at, um, being more fluid. I think that's really cool. Do you need to get better at getting more fluid? I, I don't know. Um, I, I d definitely do. I think um, one of the things I've, you know, discovered actually relatively recently is just how much better my process could be. And um, so I'm really, you know, that's part of these, these, the hope with the, these talks in this um, interview is to really understand how to do that. Because I think one of the things I've found is that so, these, so many of these things are secrets, right? Like so, these little hacks that people have um, and you just don't, you don't know about them until you see them, until you try them, until you incorporate them. So um, yeah, that's, that's really the, the hope. And I think science in particular is such a black box for non-scientists, mm -hmm. um, for people who aren't, um, not only is the, you can't even access the paper, many, most of the papers to read them, but even if you could, they're oftentimes in a language that's indecipherable. Mm -hmm. And like the, the, and you don't know the process that went into actually making it. Right. And I think that's, you know, we hear a lot about open science and it's not just about getting past um, these paywalls. It's about more transparency uh, in the entire process. And I think something you don't hear about, but I hope gets more attention is this um, transparency into the research process, because I think um, that actually has the most potential 
to positively impact young scientists, non-scientists, and um, amateur and citizen scientists. Um, so, um, yeah, I, that's what I, I, I think that Jelly is a big part of and um, that I hope more scientists will get excited about doing is adding um, some habits and some transparency to their research process because I think there's so much to be gained from it. Yeah, that reminds me, when I first started Jelly, when I, we called all of our investors, we're like, we're not, Experiment's probably not gonna make you a profit, sorry. One of the investors was like, what are you doing next? And when we were, I was describing it, he was like, oh, what you're doing is like, if a paper were a cake, you're showing how the cake was baked. <laughs> right, I love that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a recipe, mm -hmm. it's like a cookbook. Cool, well, um, thank you so much for showing me this. This is um, really interesting. Um, and I learned a lot. And I think this is gonna make, make me a better researcher. It's also, um, I'm particularly inspired by uh, some of the stuff you're doing around influencing your, your design aesthetic. I think I'm gonna incorporate more of that. Cool. Thanks for well, taking the time to poke around in my process. <laughs> you bet. All right, cool. All right.